Roundup, as in the weed killer, glyphosate is the active ingredient. Cancer, organic crops, and your health is the subject here. In 2020, I came across a little piece, a little article that mentioned Roundup being sprayed on crops just before harvest, and I thought that was weird, so I did a little digging. Here's the title of an article from the group called EcoWatch, ecowatch.com. Why is glyphosate sprayed on crops right before harvest, meaning Roundup? Ken Roseboro wrote this article in 2016. Glyphosate, glyphosate is the main ingredient in Monsanto Roundup's uh, Roundup herbicide is re recognized as the world's most widely used weed killer. What is not so well known, which is what I didn't know, is farmers use glyphosate on crops such as wheat, oats, edible beans, and other crops right before harvest. That was odd. So it's an escalating use of a probable carcinogen. Last year, the, last year so that would be 2015, the World Health Organization cancer group called the International Agency for Research on Cancer classified glyphosate as a probable carcinogen. Many other groups and scientific communities agree with that finding. The state of California also moved to classify the herbicide as a probable carcinogen. A growing body of research is documenting health concerns of glyphosate as an endocrine disruptor and it kills beneficial gut bacteria, messing up our gut biome, possibly contributing to all of these gut symptoms that so many people have now, damages the DNA in human embryonic, placental, and umbilical cord cells, and is linked to birth defects and reproductive problems in lab animals. Hmm. Sounds like something we kind of want to stay away from and limit, don't you think? Glyphosate 18.9 billion pounds have been used globally since 1974, the most widely applied weed killer in the history of chemical agriculture. 74% of all glyphosate sprayed on crops was implied in the, just the last 10 years. So 74% of the 18.9 billion pounds, billion pounds, I mean, you can't even comprehend that. Where do we make this stuff, right? Glyphosate is used to speed up wheat harvest. Now that's why it's being used here. The pre-harvest use of glyphosate allows farmer to harvest crops uh, as much as two weeks earlier than they normally would, an advantage in northern uh, colder regions and wetter regions when the crop is, is difficult to dry out, making it uh, more difficult to harvest and, and so forth. So it's now being used in the wheat growing areas of North America and Canada. All conventional farmers in Saskatchewan desiccate wheat. Desiccate means it, it's sprayed on them to kill them and dry them before they're being harvested. According to a wheat farmer who, we who went unnamed, by the way, desiccating wheat with glyphosate is commonplace. I think every non-organic farmer in Saskatchewan uses glyphosate in most of their wheat acres every year. I think farmers need to realize that all chemicals we use are bad to some extent. Monsanto, the owner, the producer of Roundup and glyphosate, has done such an effective job marketing glyphosate as safe and biodegradable that farmers here still believe this is the case even though such claims are false, which is probably why this farmer decided to do that unnamed. Tom Earhart, co-owner of Minnesota-based Alberta Lee, Lee Seed, says, I have talked with millers of conventionally produced grain, and they all agree it's very difficult to source. Oats, wheat, flax, and triticale, which have not been sprayed with glyphosate prior to harvest. It's a don't ask, don't tell policy. We are told that these um, glyphosate residues are too small to matter, but who, can we actually believe that, said this unnamed Saskatchewan farmer. I think everyone, even farmers that use and love glyph glyphosate, would rather not eat a loaf of bread with glyphosate in it. Uh, Gerald Weeb, a farmer and agricultural consultant, says consumers don't realize when they buy wheat products like flour, flour cookies, and bread, they are getting glyphosate residues in those products. Listen to this now. Listen to this. This is what he says. It is barbaric to put glyphosate in foods a few days before you harvest it. That's powerful. 
We believe that the use of glyphosate in wheat may be connected to the rise in celiac disease. We've seen an explosion of gluten intolerance, he says. What's really going on? There have been others, including Dr. Mercola, have talked about this, and other scientists that I've read too, that are linking why are so many people sensitive to wheat, not just a wheat allergy like in celiac, but gluten sensitive, which says, you know, I'm not getting um, uh, major diseases like an autoimmune disease when I'm eating wheat, but boy, I, my gut doesn't feel good, and I've got fibromyalgia and chronic pain and digestive system issues and brain fog and all of these things. And remember that you can go read those wheat belly books and grain brain and fat chance and all those kind of things. But this is a, another component to that is the use of glyphosate destroying the gut microbiome, messing up uh, gut, gut function and leading to leaky gut, leading to autoimmune disease. All of this, some people believe, from glyphosate. Can you imagine the public's response if they knew that glyphosate is being sprayed on the oats in their Cheerios only weeks before it's manufactured? Earhart said, okay, so interesting. Residue of glyphosate has been found in wheat flour. Um, along with wheat notes, this is how expansive it's being used now. Along with wheat notes, glyphosate is used to desiccate, again, kill and dry, a wide range of other crops, including lentils, peas, non-GMO soybeans, corn, flax, rye, triticale, buckwheat, millet, cano canola, sugar beets, potatoes, and sunflowers. That's how pervasive it is now. While it may account for a small uh, uh, amount of overall use of the herbicide uh, Roundup glyphosate, Ben Brooks st states it still has a huge impact. It may be 2% of the agriculture use, but well over 50% of our dietary exposure of glyphosate because it's used just before it's being harvested. I don't understand why Monsanto and the food industry don't voluntarily end this practice. They know it contributes to a high dietary exposure of glyphosate. The most tragic thing is that the industry is encouraging the use of glyphosate on wheat. Farmers are using it, consumers are unaware of it, hence this show, and it's having a powerful effect on the food system. This article, by the way, if you go to ecowatch.com, March 5th of 2016, has uh, 10 scientific references to it, so not fooling around. Now, is there pushback on the use of glyphosate by a huge company? Now remember that Monsanto was already a huge company. It was bought out by Bayer a couple of years ago, and it was bought out by not millions, not hundreds of millions, but what, uh, 55 billion or something like that, if I remember correctly. So it was huge. So now the German pharmaceutical giant Bayer owns Monsanto and so forth. And so here's some pushback. Um, I looked up on this just before the show just to see, I remember that uh, several countries in the European Union were saying, no, 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 we don't want glyphosate because we're, we're suspicious of it. Herbicide glyphosate under fire worldwide gets banned by Austria. This is an article July 3rd of 2019 out of Japan Times um, in Japan. Um, the article originates from Paris. Glyphosate, which was totally banned by Austria's parliament in Tuesday, is the world's most widely used herbicide that we know. There's growing attempts around the world to uh, stop its use. The World Health Organization International Agency in uh, Research in Cancer, as I told you, found in 20, 2015 that glyphosate is uh, potentially carcinogenic, probably carcinogenic. Um, let's see, it's 2018 is when Bayer bought out Monsanto. So in Europe, uh, Austria is the first European Union me member to forbid all glyphosate use. Many of the countries limit it, but this is Austria saying we want zero. The French government promised in May of 2018 that glyphosate would be banned for its main uses by 2021 and for all uses within five years. That's powerful. France is also saying we want none. Restrictions for its use are also enforced in the Czech Republic, Italy, and the Netherlands. There's a section in the United States reminding us, we talked about this before the show, thousands of lawsuits related to weed killer in the United States are underway against Monsanto, which has always faced three costly setbacks before California courts. Some of you may remember this story of a huge lawsuit. In May, May of 2019, uh, San Francisco court ordered Monsanto to pay more than two billion in damages to a couple who claimed the products caused cancer. I think that that, if I remember correctly, that judgment amount was reduced, but it still might have been hundreds of millions. Somebody can check on that. 
In August of 2018 and March of 2019, juries in San Francisco found Monsanto guilty for Roundup causing cancer. In Asia, the Sri Lankan government banned glyphosate imports in October 15 over fears that the chemical causes chronic kidney disease. It backtracked in May 2018. I wonder why they backtracked. I'm just wondering if there might have been any pressure from anyone somewhere. I wonder. Uh, but limited use to tea and rubber plantations only. April of 2019, Vietnam also banned products containing glyphosate. And in Latin America, Colombia outlawed aerial spraying of glyphosate in 2015. Lastly, this was an interesting blog post from Bob's Red Mill. Bob's Red Mill, a lot of you might be familiar with those products in stores. You see it everywhere, all of the different grain products that they have. And notice that some of Bob, Bob Red's Mill, Red Mill uh, products, some of them are organic and some of them are conventional. Here is the title of their blog post in 2015 titled Glyphosate. Recently, some of our customers expressed concern over, regarding the use of glyphosate in the end stages of cultivation of agri agricultural commodities. The practice is sometimes known as desiccation, as we talked about earlier, and is performed by some conventional farmers, particularly those in regions with shorter growing seasons. You have to grow it, you have to uh, harvest it quickly, so you've got a short time of doing it. We at Bob Red Mill are dedicated to bringing all of our customers natural products, whether organic or conventional, We've inquired directly with the farmers to determine if glyphosate is being used in this way. The majority of our conventional wheat is grown close to the home uh, in the Pacific Northwest, according to Bob's Red Mill, where growing seasons are typically longer and the practice of desiccation is, is such rarely used, so they have more time to dry crops and harvest them and so forth. We've been told that desiccation is not a practice used by our individual farmers. The growing harvest and communal storage practices sometimes used by the wheat industry in general make it nearly impossible, however, for our multi-source suppliers to guarantee the practice of glyphosate desiccation is not used with all of the conventional wheat suppliers which, which are selling to us. What they're getting at is, is we can't guarantee it's not in there. Okay? We are, this is important now. This comes to our conclusion of this video. We are able to assure our customers, however, that glyphosate desiccation is not a practice used for our organic products, as the use of glyphosate is not permitted at any time in the cultivation of our organically grown ingredients. Our customers who desire to be certain that glyphosate has not been used may wish to choose instead from our extensive line of our certified organic products. So what do we do as individuals with this information? I just gave you a bunch of stuff and I said look at this glyphosate. It's, it's being used everywhere. 18.9 billion pounds used and so forth. Well what do we do? Let's just keep it really simple. Number one is always buy organic whenever you can. And number two which is very important with this too is always buy non-GMO. So look for products and be an ingredient snob, look at your labels all the time, make sure it's, it's organic whenever you can, it's non-GMO when you can. The third thing is, is if you're already gluten-free and possibly grain-free, you're kind of, are, you're, you're already there, you're going to be avoiding a lot of these big grain crops that I just talked about which are suspect of having glyphosate being used or glyphosate residuals or this farm over here is getting windblown glyphosate and stuff from this farm and that's a problem and we can't deal with that here but 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 maybe you're already kind of grain free so you can just do your 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 um, your, your work from there okay next is continuing your education on yourself specifically with wheat specifically with gluten and look at those books that I've talked about many times from those medical physician authors that have done such a great job you look at wheat belly by Dr. William Davis. You look at Grain Brain by Dr. David Perlmutter. You look at Fat Chance by Dr. Robert Lustig. Those three books would just really start to set you in and say, okay, the crops have been GMO. The crops have been probably laced with glyphosate. That's probably affecting our gut. The crops 
the wheat crops that our grandmothers and great grandmothers and so forth that used to, that used to know are different than they used to be, which is why so many people with a more milder gluten sensitivity in the United States can go over to Europe and eat products with wheat in them and not have sensitivities because we've really messed it up over here and they probably haven't messed it up as much over there and they're trying to resist that change. So maybe going gluten-free for a lot of you, for your kids that are struggling with ADD and ADHD and concentration learning and behavior disorders, maybe they do well. If they're having digestive system problems and skin trouble and, and, uh, and all of those things, maybe they go with a gluten-free diet. We can back that up with those, uh, those books there. Dr. Kelly Brogan's book, as I told you, Own Yourself, talking about um, anxiety and depression and other mental disorders, also recommends these types of, th of things. And then maybe you do a dairy-free diet, because remember that the corn and soy crops that are grown so pervasively in this country are now fed to cows, but cows in the, in the wild don't eat corn and soy, so now you have sick cows which are getting the GMO crops, they're getting the crops laced with glyphosate, and they're getting a whole bunch of omega-6 bad fats and not enough omega-3 good fats that they would if they were eating grass. So now they're all messed up and then we're consuming the products from them. And even without all of that, a lot of us are dairy sensitive anyway. So maybe you look at a dairy-free, gluten-free thing which would avoid a lot of the things here that we're talking about. So educate yourself, shop as best you can. And lastly is budget. Budget yourself to buy organic when you can Usually a lot of these things, even the Bob, Bob's Red Mill products, if you look at the conventional products and compare it to the organic products, there's really not that much of a price difference in most of the products. It might be a couple of bucks here and there. Definitely budget, budget for that, and I, I think that's worthwhile. And lastly, don't forget that you could do a uh, community-supported agriculture. If you're working with small farms around here, you get a CSA share like I do, then you, you get to talk to the farmers, actually see the fields and watch your food grow right, right in front of you there. And there's a much better chance of these substances and products not being put on your food. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller. Good luck.